Tim, here we go again. You and I have been through a number of adventures in the uh, private space community. We probably got about an hour in zero G together over a number of missions and air shows and X Prize events and so forth. But here at the ISTC 2009, this is something that you've been pretty much responsible for, so you get to take the blame. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. It's an amazing event, and uh, we're really glad to have you here. Uh, ISDC is the culmination of years of work to bring the space community together. It's really the People's Space Conference. So versus a business conference or an industry conference, this is really where the normal person gets to come out and find out what's going on in space and interact with the leaders of the industry. Give me a mission statement for ISDC 2009, especially for this particular time and place. This year we really focused on making Florida the centerpiece of what's going on. Uh, with shuttle transition going on, moving to the new programs, finding out what's happening and letting people know what's going on. What are the new programs that are coming up? What's going to be happening in Florida over the next few years? And how that affects the whole rest of the space program. Not just NASA and the things that are going on in, inside the government space, but also in the commercial sector and private space vehicles that are coming up. What I like to say is that ISDC is the place where anybody can come and be a part of space and learn what there is. We have a lot of students come in, we have a lot of entrepreneurs and people that are new to the space industry and they can immediately get involved. It is a very personal thing now. We had Richard Garriott speak last night and he told his story of being an astronaut's son that was denied by NASA and now he has the opportunity to make his own way into space and uh, his parting words were, the time of talking is over, the time of doing is now, and I think that's what this conference is, is really showing, is that you can go out and be a part of the space industry now. What are some of the most powerful aspects of what you've seen here in the last two days? So far, what I've seen that's really amazing is that the commercial space sector has come together in a way that I didn't know was happening. The government and regulatory entities, the individual players that could be in, in stiff competition and are, are actually working really well together because everybody knows that that's what it's going to take to make this uh, succeed and for everyone to be able to have a place in space. And even at NASA, they have their own vehicles, they're doing their own programs, but they're still supporting the, the commercial space sector. And I think that's a vital message for us to get out to know that even though there's competition and we all want to win, it's also a group effort. And I think that's been amazing to watch here. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. One of the things that's been noticeable to me in some of the NASA presentations is nobody's talking down anymore. The technologies and the people that have, that have been in the space industry for a while have finally matured to the point where um, they're no longer seen as fringe. Everybody actually has a place and there's opportunities for NASA to be able to go out to some of these small startup companies and say, you've got a brilliant idea and a brand new way of doing something and we'd really love to pull that in and use that expertise that you've got and I think this is a fantastic place to, to see that and to be able to talk to some of those people and for someone getting into the industry to say, how did you do it? What was the path that you took? And what finally made NASA decide to look at you for some of these technologies rather than developing them themselves? And that's a, a fantastic conversation to have and people here are willing to have it. Let's put you on the spot. Give a report card to this industry. I'm talking about the private and commercial industry that's grown up around items like XPRIZE and items like Zero-G and items like the Lunar Lander Challenges and a number of other things that have come up that have spurred on innovation and spurred on competition and of course is reacting to an industry that will someday be selling literally rides suborbitally at first and eventually orbitally. Um, how are we doing? Wow, that is a very loaded question. And I think part of the, the difficulty I have in answering is that there's no metric to measure it by. We don't know what success looks like yet. Um, if we tried to do that in the early days of aviation, did you say that they were successful when they were in the barnstorming phase? Was it only successful when you had commercial airliners? Was it really only successful once you had jet airliners? So I think overall the industry continues to rise. If I had to give it a grade, I'd say a B plus. I think there's always more that could be done and I think there's definitely room to expand the industry. But the players are very strong. They're numerous. Uh, there's, there's turnover and there's companies churning and I think that's a good sign that you can have some companies fall out and new companies come up to take those spots. So I'd say overall the industry gets a B plus right now. Then the worst question, 
where do we go from here? The only place to go is up. And I think we're going to need to continue looking up and figuring out what technologies make the most sense. Uh, we're going to have some companies that fail. We're going to have new companies that get built up by the students that are here at this conference. And we really need to keep working on and looking at how do we work together better, how do we use the, the lessons that we've learned from Apollo and from all of these years doing shuttle to really move out of that phase and let commercial industry take that over while NASA moves on to something else. And I think that's where we go from here is that we start that transition of NASA moving out of low Earth orbit and letting the commercial players completely take that over. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. How is the formula going to change a couple of years hence when companies like Virgin Galactic and x -Core are regularly putting people into suborbital space? What's going to happen to this industry? How is that going to energize a public that's kind of stood back and go, well, maybe my kids, but not me? I think you're going to see a lot of secondary enterprises and a lot of secondary companies built up around it because once you've gotten the aircraft flying then there's support there's maintenance there's FBOs that come up and nobody's really talking about a lot of the secondary pieces yet orbital outfitters is saying that they're going to be working on the spacesuits uh, we've got the Mojave spaceport that's looking at what they need to evolve into to support some of these commercial operations but I think that's where you're going to see the most growth in the industry is that once you have high volumes of people going into space you're going to find extra things they want to do, whether that's in media, whether that's um, clothing. All of the culture items that we don't really have for the space industry yet is actually where the growth sector is going to be. A couple of months from now, you've got a big event coming up in your life. Your first child is, is uh, what, about two months away? Two months away. What message from this standpoint are you going to give to him or her about what they might be able to do with a future in space? I'm really excited that my daughter is going to be born into a world where space is not only there and accessible to some, but it's accessible to everyone. And she gets to do interior designs for spacecraft. She gets to do lunar habitat construction. You know, whatever she wants to do, living and working in space is now a real part of her life that she's going to grow up with. And I think that's uh, so amazing and so mind-blowing. I can't even think of what she might want to do with it. Um, that's not even something that you can do on Earth. Uh, or that you could imagine having a job doing down here. Uh, I'm waiting to see what I'm going to be doing when I retire, uh, and I can't wait to see what she's doing then, too. We all look back at Apollo and think, wow, that was the time to live in. Mm -hmm. And really, we're in that same type of time now. And to really be present to that and know that that's what we're creating for my daughter is an opportunity to live and work in space in a way that no one's ever done before is really phenomenal, and I'm proud to be a part of the industry. You should be. You've done some great work. Thank you. Thank you.